Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the experimental series from Glenfiddich, and specifically their IPA cask finish. Now, this was the first introduction into the experimental series, and it was soon followed by the Project XX, the Winter Storm, and then ultimately the Fire and Cane, which I did a review of a little while ago. So, let's talk a little bit about the, albeit very short, but significant history of this particular whiskey. Now, Glenfiddich is uh, not unlike other scotches, where they kind of want to do their experiments, but they want to make it a big deal. And the reason for that is to help cover the costs, right? R&D is expensive. So if you could put something out as a special release, people are going to eat it up. And that's fair. And they do. And people like to have the unique tastes. So when they decided to do this IPA cask finish, they decided to work with a local brewer named Seb Jones. Now, Seb had been brewing beer since he was 13, hanging out with his dad, brewing beer. You know how it goes. Every, every little boy needs a very wholesome hobby. <laughs> so he was brewing beer with his dad, and he ended up becoming a chemist, actually. He got his degree in chemistry. And after getting a job in a laboratory, kind of realized that wasn't really for him. But luckily, actually, it's interesting how many brewers and distillers and everything end up having degrees in chemistry. They all try it, don't like it, and then decided to make alcohol. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. But in this case, Seb was no different, except he had been brewing for quite a while. And he made this particular brew that he had at his mom's birthday party. It was kind of well-liked, and people gave him a lot of compliments. And he started thinking, hey, you know what? I got this chemistry degree. Maybe I could actually do this full time. And he did exactly that. Ended up opening the Speyside Craft Brewery in 2012, and the rest is history. Albeit a very successful history, because four years later, Glenn Fiddick reached out to Seb and said, Hey, we want to try this new thing. We want to, you know, basically give you X Glenn Fiddick barrels, have you age your own beer in it for whatever you want. In this case, it ended up being about four weeks. And then take that beer back out of there, bottle it, sell it, do whatever you want, but then put our Glenn Fiddick back into the barrel and see what happens. And that's exactly what spawned this. So that's about it. There's really not a whole lot more to this. So let's go ahead and just kind of get into the nosing and the tasting. As you could imagine, uh, IPAs, they, they tend to be hoppy, right? That's kind of their whole thing. But in this case, I'm expecting to be able to, to smell and especially taste some of that hop influence. So let's go ahead and give this a nose. Notice that deep etching on this beautiful glass. <laughs> if you're interested, check the store. I, honestly, the etching is very cool. Um, so when I nose this, it is, it's interesting because it's basically exactly like Glenfiddich. There is a slight, well, let me, let me just kind of tell you. So Glenfiddich, Glenfiddich is typically like honey, green apples, pears, maybe a little bit of vanilla, but that's, that's mostly it. It actually has a very simple profile but all of those things are very good, right? There's a reason that it's as popular as it is. When I would expect to smell hops in here, I would expect to smell hops in here. And now after doing a little bit of research, not research, like <laughs> I use the word research to essentially mean drinking, um, sitting around, smelling this, drinking this, what I get is something that's reminiscent more of time than anything else. And after thinking about it for a little bit, I realized that's probably, I mean, it's definitely the hops because time is not present in the regular Glenfiddich, but it took a while to get there. And more importantly, you get it mostly when you just pour. So if you have this at home and you smell something that smells very herbaceous, uh, specifically strong, maybe even like sage or thyme or rosemary, something in that realm, you're probably smelling the hops. So anyway, that's, that's what I'm getting from the, the smell here. Let's go ahead and give this a taste. It does smell good. Cheers. The hops comes across quite a bit more in the taste. It's not overbearing. And frankly, if you had told me, if you just gave this to me blind, I would say that this tastes like a slightly drier version. I would probably actually nail this as either a Glenfiddich or, or a, um, a Glenlivet or, or some other type of light Speyside whiskey. Like it, it just, it has a very fruit forward taste, but there is something else there. But I would not personally have placed it as hops. Um, I would probably say, hey, this has a weird spicy note, um, sorry, not spicy, herb, herbal note 
that I don't know what that is. <laughs> and that's exactly like, honestly, that's what I would say. I would, I would say there is something there. It tastes a little herby and I just have no clue. So that's interesting. And I'm curious kind of what they were going for, because to me, the, the flavor here is heavy on citrus, right? It's heavy on fruit, uh, specifically citrus with lemons, right? The, the green apple comes across, but I will say that the herbaceousness cuts down on the crispness that you get on the green apple. And because of that, it's, it's almost taking away what makes Glenfiddich really good in my eyes is that uh, green apple. I feel like that's their key note. That's what they do really well. Uh, some of the other stuff that I'm getting in here is vanilla. I am definitely getting honey, but mostly on the finish. The, the, the herbal taste is there, but it's, how do you, how do you want to say this? It's not that it is, it's not overbearing and it's not full bodied, but it's there. It's the body here is coming. I, I realize maybe I'm rambling a little bit, but I, I like to work through this sometimes with you on camera. I have my notes, of course, but I like to work through it, especially when I taste something new. A lot of times when I film these, it's my first drink of the night, and sometimes that's a really good time to taste things. Sometimes it's not. It depends on, on your palate of that day. So let's have another sip. So on the second taste here, the the herbaceousness is coming out a little bit more. You're losing some of that citrus to the fact that your tongue is now a little bit more used to this. You're still getting lemon. I would still pick lemon out 10 out of 10 times. But what I'm getting more of is that thyme rosemary flavor, which is just hops. Like hops does not taste like thyme or rosemary, but most of us have not just chewed on hops. Maybe some of us have chewed on rosemary and thyme, you know, just, just to taste. Um, some of us have chewed hops, but not me. I know what hops smell like, and I know what they taste like in a beer. This is not how they taste in a beer, but it is tasting similar to how they smell. You follow? So let's go ahead and, and kind of just talk overall here. I think this is a pretty tasty whiskey, mostly because it's interesting. And I got to say the price point when it first came out was about $60. I bought this for $50. It was not on sale. It just was $50. The regular Glenfiddich 12 is $40. So for 10 extra dollars to try something, if you like regular Glenfiddich, to try something in the experimental series for an extra $10, I feel like is an okay decision. Um, I don't know that I would put this one out there as something that you absolutely need to try or need to buy, I should say. But I do think that this is a fun one to try. And especially because some of the other experimental series are a little bit more pricier, this could be an interesting introduction into their experimental series if it's something that you want to do. Now, this has been around for, you know, at the time of filming this, about five years. So it's clearly working. People enjoy this whiskey. And the fact that they didn't just amp the price up to $80 or something crazy like that just to try to make it like a little exclusive, I respect that. Um, and because of that, and, and many other reasons, I'm going to give this a try it. But what I want to do here, well, I tried something new this week. On YouTube, uh, they have the polls. I'm sure you've all seen them, right? So I asked you guys what you thought. If you've had this before, what would you give it a rating of? And I thought that the answers were pretty interesting. So there were 61% of people have never tried it, which that's fair. You're going to get that probably all the time. 13% said to ignore it, which I thought was high, but... You know, it is what it is. 18% said to try it, 4% said to buy it, and 3% said to stock it. Now, this is out of 239 votes. And now, given that, maybe I'll give you guys a little bit more time. I, I think I only had the poll up there for maybe 10 hours or so. But out of 239 votes, you know, there were 5%, 7, 7 of people said that you should either stock it or buy it. And another 18% said that you should try it. So, I mean, that's approaching significant amounts there. It's like 25% of people say that you should probably have this in your face. <laughs> so I think that, you know, that says a lot. Um, let me think what else I want to do here, because I, I have this idea. I think what I'm going to do, he pulls the Glenfiddich from slightly off camera, pretending that this is a surprise. I want to try this as a sip against, you know, the IPA cask and just kind of see if that herbaceousness is as prevalent in here. And maybe I'm just being influenced by the bottle and knowing what's in there. 
So, uh, let me grab a quick water here. All right, put that on the ground because it tends to shake. Now let's have a sip of this. This is the, just the regular Glenfiddich 12. I covered this a little while ago. If you're interested in the history of the brand, check out the uh, link above. So, on the nose, it's almost identical actually. I can't tell you that I would necessarily pick either one of these over the other if I were to shuffle them. I think these are about as close as you could possibly get. Yeah, I think they're they're basically identical. So let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. Okay. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Okay, there is definitely a difference there. Actually, there's definitely a difference. Now this one is 40%, this is 43%. As far as scotch goes, yes, that can have some significant change, but not really. Like, it's not like we're dealing with a 50% and a 40%. These are close enough that the taste should be very close. But there is definitely a different taste in the IPA, uh, which is great. I, I'm happy to see that. I was a little bit worried these were going to be really close together. Not that I really have any, you know, uh, horse in the race, as, as they say. But it makes sense that it should be different enough to put it in a different bottle. Now, I would suggest, if you've never had Glenfiddich, you should start with the 12. I would recommend that to people all day long. But, again, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this a rating of try it. I believe I already rated it try it, but I'm just making that formal. I think you should try this. And for $50, I just don't think it's a bad, bad idea. But I also think that there's probably other ones that you should buy for $50 first. If you're feeling excited about the idea of the uh, experimental series and you're a collector and you want to have, you know, this and then the Project XX, the Winter Storm and the Fire and Cane, like you're totally not going to go wrong buying this. I think that you will enjoy it, but I also think by the end of the bottle, you'll be sick of it or at least not eager to buy another bottle. So anyway... Um, if you're interested, again, if you're interested in Glenfiddich, check out the video that I did on the Glenfiddich. It's got all the history behind the brand. And if you're interested in some of the experimental series, check out the video that I did on the Fire and Cane. I actually made kind of a weird cocktail on there. So thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. Uh, and be sure to check out the links in the description below. Like this video said to buy it and 3% said to stock it. Now, this is out of 239 votes, and now given that, maybe I'll give you guys a little bit more time. I, I think I only had the poll up there for maybe 10 hours or so, but out of 239 votes, you know, there were five, seven, seven percent of people said that you should either stock it or buy it, and another 18% said that you should try it. So, I mean, that's 